Welcome to Services Plus Masterclass 2023. We are on season two, and I'm honored to present the very first episode of this season. And in this episode, we are going to discuss about templates. So when talking about templates, what comes to my mind is about the Indian cinemas. So if you happen to watch Indian movies, we always have a template where we have an introduction song for our protagonist. Then we have a song for his love interest. And then there comes a rain theme song. And finally, I'm not sure why the last song comes up, but for no reason, there is a song there as well. So here, I'm not going to talk about the templates in Indian cinemas, but I'm going to discuss with you the designing and creation of dynamic templates with Service Test Plus. I'm Hari Priya, a product expert with Service Test Plus, and I'm with Service Test Plus for the past uh, six years. I handle trainings and implementations, and I'm also a part of the regular support operations team situated in Chennai. So if you look into the daily routine of an IT technician, there are so many tasks that are being performed by them. On one end, there is a critical server getting patched up, and on the other end, there is a technician trying to fix a broken laptop. Then there would be a user sending constant follow-ups asking for an update on the mobile gadget promised to be delivered. So we are going to see in today's session on how Service Desk Plus is going to make the life of your technicians easier in performing their day-to-day -day activities. To help with our session here, I'm considering an imaginary organization goes by the name Vilka. Zilka has more than 10,000 employees who work in a hybrid model, and the organization is spread across multiple sites across the world. Now, Zilka has many challenges that they face in their day-to-day -day IT life. When evaluating their delayed resolved incidents, they could see that there are many hindrances related to the prioritization of the ticket and while routing the tickets to the appropriate technicians. Talking about their service management, all the needed inputs to process the request is not captured in first shot. Hence, the technicians need to go back and forth asking for more details in order to get the request approved and then finally worked upon. Now, if we look at their change management, not determining the criticality of the resource that is to undergo the change and the impact that it would likely cause, the risk factor is not rightly estimated and this leads to increased downtime. So we are going to help Zilker customize all these requirements and to develop a strategic ITSM process with the help of dynamic customized templates in Service Test Plus. So we have got templates spread out, uh, spread out across multiple modules, starting with your incident and service management. So we are going to look into incident management and for this purpose, I have taken with me an example of an IT asset issue. So without just wasting further time, let's just get started. I've accessed my setup over here, my Service Desk Plus application, and I'm logging in as a guest user. As soon as I log in, I am redirected to the ESN portal where I go ahead and choose the IT Help Desk instance, and the self service portal for me is finally loaded. Now, I have an issue with my laptop, so I would like to report this as an issue. And the most relevant category that I can see here is the hardware. I choose hardware, and then the template that finds to be most suitable is the IT asset issue. As soon as I click on this template, a nice little form loads right in front of me, and it has got all the fields that are necessary to be filled in. Nothing more, nothing less. Only the required information is going to be captured in this form. So as a user, my eyes is first set onto this field, asset to report. So since I have an issue with my laptop, I'm going to choose laptop. And as soon as I choose laptop, I see the laptop model getting automatically displayed here. So I can choose whichever laptop model I use. Say I use HP. And say I have an issue with more issues or gadgets like my monitor or my keyboard, I can again choose them. So this is like a multi-select field where I'm allowed to choose more than one asset. Say I'm not having an issue with my laptop, but my, with my headset model. So let me go ahead and choose headset. And now you can see that 
the laptop model field has been disappeared and the headset model field has appeared where I can choose between the choices that I have. Furthermore, switching back to my laptop here, I go back to the issue type. So there are a couple of issue types displayed here, but I'm not exactly sure which issue type to choose. I'm presented with a help text section where it tells me that I need to choose a type that is most relevant to the issue that I face. Now I spill water on my laptop and my laptop will not start anymore. So I could say that my laptop is faulty. So I choose faulty and I give a detailed description. So water spilled on my laptop and it would not start. Next I see here is my preferred contact time. I would like to be contacted any time between 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And as soon as I choose this, I'm getting an alert stating that the IT team will try to reach me at the selected time slot and to be available. Clicking OK to agree to this. I choose the relevant impact and urgency. So this laptop is this this laptop issue is just affecting me, and this laptop is very important to me because without it, my productivity will get affected. So it's important, but I can give some time for my technicians to get it fixed. If you happen to see here, my subject field is just disabled. I'm not allowed to make any changes to the temp, uh, to the subject. But very soon after I submit this form, you're going to see a difference. So just stay tuned for it. And before I proceed further, I do see a help card section towards the right, which gives me a set of instructions stating that the replacement of the laptop is subjected to the availability of the asset in case if I have to get this laptop replaced. And it also advises to me to give as much accurate information as possible. After reviewing all the details, I now go ahead and click add request to submit this form. So as soon as this form is submitted, you could see that the ticket has been created with the subject altered in such a way that the asset is the issue type and the requester is clubbed and I get a, a meaningful subject statement over here. So. Now, if I go into a technician login, so this is a technician login and I have all the tickets created here. I do see a ticket created for the guest user login. So I get into this ticket and I'm able to see all the details that I have already provided here. Now, the ticket has been created and I can have this assigned to a technician to start working on it. So I can make use of the technician auto feature, auto assign feature to get the technician assigned. And based on the impact and the urgency, I can automatically get the priority set using the priority matrix feature. Now let us go into the configuration part and see how I was able to design this particular template and make it available to the end user. So just for you to have a look at this template again, let me go ahead and choose the template from the user login. As soon as I choose, I'm seeing that the laptop model and the headset model is not initially displayed. It means that the fields are hidden. So how did I do that? So I go to my admin login to my admin and I choose incident templates. So under the section templates and forms, I see incident template. I click on it and I see the IT asset issue. As soon as I choose this template, the form loads right in front of me, but I do see more fields than what I see in the user login. There is a separate layout available for my temp technicians and my requesters. I can decide how the template needs to look for a technician login and how the template needs to look for a requester login. For example, there are fields like group and technician, which might be needed by the technician to route this request across to different groups and different technicians. Whereas a requester will not take part in ticket assignment and hence I have taken off these fields from the template. It's not the predefined fields alone that you can add to the template, but you can also add your own customized additional fields. 
So here are the list of default fields that are already provided by my system, something like the category, subcategory, and item. All I have to do is to simply drag and drop it into the template, and it makes available. So just to recap, we were discussing about the template that can be configured. So we saw initially how a user will be able to choose multiple assets from a single field and also make use of pick list where I can choose one option from multiple options. I will be able to choose the type of field based on whether it is a pick list field or a multi-line field or a numeric field. What I have to do is to simply drag and drop into the template and that field will be available in the template. I can further go ahead and customize by giving it a suitable name and making it mandatory. And if I would like to have the requester set values to the field, then yes, I can go ahead and do that. Once this is done, and if I would like to provide certain instructions on guidelines on how this template needs to be filled, I have this help text area that can be configured as well. So this is the same help card section which you were able to see in the user login. Going down further this template, I can make this template available to targeted audience. So this particular template is to raise issues with IT assets. So the technicians who are going to work on IT re assets related issues are going to be hardware support and sysadmin. So rather than ma making this template available to the rest of the technicians who are not going to use this template anywhere in the future, I'm just going to make this template available to those two support groups. So you can have technicians group under one or more support groups based on the qualification and the skill set they possess. Similarly, once I make this template available to the requester, I can also have this template targeted to the specific user groups. A user can be a part of one or more user groups based on the department and the site that they belong to, the name and the email address they hold, and the job title they have. So I have created a sample user group for HR and finance where all the users of the, res the department human resources and finance will be displayed. Now this is the layout section of the template. So we can configure the template separately for temp technician and requester layout. Proceeding further is my field and form rules tab of the template where all the logical operations that were performed by my form is made available using this particular feature. So as soon as I chose the asset to report as laptop, I was able to see the laptop model. Whereas if I choose something like a headset, the headset model was displayed and the laptop model just went away. You also saw that the subject was automatically updated with the relevant field information. So all these were done using my field and form rules. So to look into this, let's just load this form. And I've got all the fields hidden here. So for that, I have created a rule on form load in such a way that as soon as I create a ticket on form load, I would like to hide the fields headset model and the laptop model. And I have also disabled subject. Now, when I choose laptop under asset to report, I would like to show the field laptop model. So I choose on field change and I would like to change the field asset to report. And if the asset to report is laptop, then I show the field laptop model. Similarly, I have written another rule for the headset model with the same action-based criteria. Not just that you will be able to write or, or show or hide fields, you, sh you should be able to also enable or disable fields, mandate or non-mandate fields. And if you have got pick list or multi-select options, you can either add options or remove options. And not just that, you can also write scripts under field and form rules. An example is the alert message which was shown when I chose a preferred contact time. So as soon as I chose preferred contact time, I got this alert message which was written in the form of a script, in the form of an alert message. The subject which got automatically updated was also possible with the help of the JavaScript that I have written over here. So I clubbed all the values from different fields and I had it updated in the subject. The next tab 
that we can see in the template is the workflow tab. And I will call it the heart of the template because much of the advanced configurations that you see comes from this part of the template. Same section being the task. So when I have an issue that needs to be worked upon by not just one technician, but by a set of technicians belonging to different support groups, I can have this entire issue or a service broken down into multiple tasks and they can be assigned to the respective support group and the support technicians. So here I have created three different tasks for my laptop. So the issue that was reported here is that the water spilled on my laptop and my laptop will not start anymore. So it could be that my motherboard, the motherboard of the laptop is corrupted. So I go ahead and create a task to replace the motherboard and for the heating issues to replace the battery. Once the motherboard is replaced, obviously all the software are gone. So I will have to reinstall the operating system and the relevant software for the user. And finally, I will have this asset inventory back into the asset module of my service desk plus. Now, all these tasks look meaningful, but there is one hiccup that you might face. Say, for example, this asset inventory task, which has been assigned to my asset management technician of service desk plus. What if it tries to inventory the asset way before my motherboard is replaced or way before the software has been installed? It's going to be a total waste of time because the laptop is not going to exist without a motherboard, at least in it, right? So I would like to say, or I would like to organize my tasks and teach my technicians that they will have to wait for the parent tasks to get complete. So rather than teaching the technicians, I'm going to teach Service Desk Plus in the form of task dependencies. So here, I'm creating a dependency such that the replacement of battery and motherboard comes first, followed by the installation of software. And after that, finally, my asset needs to get inventoried. So this way, the technicians will exactly know when to wait and what in what time to wait to finally get the task completed. So the task that is the parent task is initially assigned to the group and the technician. For the other technicians, the task will be marked to them. So you can see this mark sign over here. So you can have this mark sign enabled for the technicians of the child tasks. So far, we have seen how we will be able to customize the layout of a template separately for the technician and the requester view, how to make this template available to a targeted set of audience, and how the template can perform logical operations or be dynamic and interactive enough with the help of your condition-based actions, field and form rules, and finally, your task. Now that we have got all the tasks in place, let us imagine that these tasks have been completed and now it is time for us to go ahead and close the request. Before I close this request, I would like to make sure that some checks are done in related to this request. One is that I would like to make sure that the asset is in warranty. Next, I would like to check if a vendor assistance was required during the course of troubleshooting the issue and whether a replacement was required for this device. I would like to make sure that the technician working on this ticket verifies this checklist and finally goes ahead and closes the ticket. But what if my technician forgets to verify this checklist? How do I mandate it? For that purpose, I have got request closure rules. So under request closure rules, I can enable a set of fields which will get mandated at the time of closing the request. I will enable associated checklist should be verified and associated tasks should be completed so that all the tasks are completed and the checklists are verified before I go ahead and close this request. If you look at the right side of my request, I do see something called as transition. Exactly. If you're wondering, it's correct. It's that I am teaching service disk plus that for each and every issue that is reported in the organization or each and every service that is delivered by the organization, I would like to have a standard set of processes to be followed by the technicians. Of this way, the technician might think of replacing the laptop even before trying to fix the laptop. 
in this way how many laptops will get replaced without even finding out the root cause or without even trying to fix it in the first place that's not a good practice right so rather than the technician going ahead and replacing it straight away i would like the technician to follow this process so if the technician can fix the laptop and deliver it to the user then he can click on issue fixed and it automatically changes to the status resolved whereas if assistance from the vendor is required i can go for this transition or even if the vendor cannot fix it then i can initiate an adopt request in order to get my laptop replaced this i have got request life cycle a feature in service disk plus so request life cycle is all about statuses and transition from one status to the other so the one in the white boxes are all the statuses that i have configured in my application over here and the transition is that it teaches the structure of the flow of the request right from the starting the creation of the request till the end of the request so i have created a detailed flow chart on how my process needs to be followed by the technician during each transition i can perform a set of validations i can perform a set of actions during the transition and after the transition is complete i can send notification mails so much of the activities that a technician needs to follow during the transition of each and every status change is automatically carried out by my request life cycle you will learn more about request life cycle priority matrix and other automations in our upcoming master class series taking a quick overview of what we have discussed so far we saw how the template can be categorized based on the technician and the requester layout how it can be customized how to include custom field additional fields into the templates how to make the template available to a targeted set of audience then how to make this template template interactive enough with the help of field and form rules this template can be broken down into tasks and you can also have checklist assigned to the template which will help the technicians to perform the activity in a timely manner and in an organized way and finally we also saw request life cycle which teaches the process on how a particular issue or a particular service needs to be carried out by the technicians so using all these points zilker will no longer have a problem with prioritizing a ticket or assigning the tickets to the appropriate technicians or performing other automations which is going to save much of technicians time we are going to move on to service catalog so service catalog is about delivering a particular service to the end user and in today's session i am going to take a very common example that you might all have been a part of so at any point in your life so it's the onboarding example so i'm sure that at least at the time of joining the organization or when you you might have had delivered a service when a new joinee would come to your organization so in some way or the other you are going to be connected to this onboarding process and that is exactly the example that i have taken for today's session so i'm going to choose the template here user onboarding and as soon as i choose this template again a form with all the relevant information is populated right in front of me so all those features that we discussed under incident template is rightly available on your service catalog as well and in addition to this we are going to see a few more details so here i'm going to onboard a manager so as soon as i click the employee type as manager i am st stated that the manager will be issued with a laptop and i can opt for a mobile gadget on behalf of the manager so i say okay to this and as soon as i say okay i find a neatly presented format of all the relevant options and questions that needs to be chosen in the form of a resource info section so in this section i have all the details that are necessary to be filled before i start the onboarding process for example the laptop model so i do have a list of laptop options here so let me go ahead and choose dell for this manager before i choose dell i would like to read the hardware specification so i click on view details and i look into the model provided the other product information like processor the operating system to be installed 
the memory and storage, the design and battery, etc. Now, this is something which is suitable for my manager. So I click Dell and the option is selected with a cost displayed along with it. So for each and every service option that I'm going to choose, whichever comes with a cost, the cost is also displayed along with it. Furthermore, let me choose the other information, the operating system that needs to be installed. I choose Windows XP. Uh, the additional hardware which is needed is, say, an external hard disk is needed, an optical mouse. I need to install software like Chrome and Firefox. Um, give him an iPhone. Again, my iPhone comes with an additional set of cost. Then I give him access to VPN. So based on the information that I have chosen here, all the cost is being calculated for Dell, for the external hard disk, and for the optical mouse. And the sum cost is displayed here on my screen in the very same template. So it's very important to track the budget scale of an entire organization. And to start with, you will have to track the expense right from raising a new service. So the best place to track the cost is definitely from your service catalog. So once you set the cost here, this gets added to the department cost center because each and every department contributes to the expense scale of an organization. So once I provide all the necessary details, I can go ahead and choose a suitable SLA based on which the template would, the form would let me know within which time duration will the service be promised to be delivered to me. For example, if I'm going to choose uh, this SLA for manager or VIP on board, now, since I have chosen manager as the employee type to be onboarded, I find this more relevant. So rather than delivering this service within 14 days, I opt to be delivered within two days. So here, the template shows that it's going to, the entire service is going to be delivered within two days, exempting the operational hours. So this way, my the user or whoever is raising this form is provided with a clear picture on when the service is going to get delivered. And this way, the technicians can stay, um, if they, they can be sure that the requesters are not constantly following up with them, asking for an update on the service. Now, so far, we saw how this template can be categorized. Now, we are going to see how this template can be configured. So for that, again, I go to my admin tab. And under templates and forms, I have service catalog. Go to service catalog. And I see the list of service categories displayed. Under each service category, I can create as many templates as required. Now, this is an onboarding related request, and I have created it under user management. So edit user onboarding, and the same template loads right in front of me. As said earlier, all the fields, default fields, are available on my left pane. And if I would like to add more, Customized templates, I can do that from the left pane section over here. It's not just here. I do have a dedicated page under my admin tab for my additional fields. So here I have incident additional fields and service related additional fields. With incident and service additional fields put together, I can add up to 140 additional fields in the application. Scrolling down further this template, here is my resource info section, which I have customized. So I have clubbed all the relevant questions under one single resource info section. And I'm going to edit this section and show to you how they can be organized. So these are the questions and the options that were already created. And the additional set of questions that I can create is of type plain text, checkbox, like in the question here to choose the additional hardware the radio type and the drop down type. So to demonstrate to you a live example, let me choose radio. And let, let me say that I would like to choose a hard drive from this list. So choose hard drive. I'm going to enable the cost and also the enable image if I would like to add an image and cost to the option. Now I'm need to, going to need to choose an option for this particular hard drive. So if you think that the only option is to manually add the options, definitely not. You have an option to choose from the already available product types from the asset management of Service Disk Plus. Going to asset management here, this is the asset module of my Service Disk Plus where I have different assets 
like my access point, printer, router, workstations, servers, etc. And I also have non-IT assets and finally asset components like my keyboard and my hard disk. So the user here is supposed to choose a hard disk and we are going to provide him with a hard disk that is already inventoried into the asset module of Service Disk Plus. So let me go back to my options and I'm going to look for hard disk, which is the product type that is already available here. And as soon as I choose hard disk, the available hard disk, premium and laser hard disk is available here. So I choose them and they come along with the cost option, which I have already done. I can go ahead and individually edit the options and provide them an image or update their cost, provide them a description for this option, etc., which you saw under view details over here. So whatever you see under view details is the description which I added to the option over here. Okay, now, as soon as I click save, this particular is going to get automatically added under this particular resource info section. So I update it and now I can choose uh, the option for hard drive, either laser or premium. This way I can create as many resource sections as required and under each resource sections, I can create the respective res resource questions. All these uh, information is not available just under your template, but it is also available as separate pages or sections under your admin module. So all you have to do is search for resource and resource questions and resource sections which were already created and an option to newly create them is already available here. So, so far we have seen how to enable the cost for each and every option and some of the cost in the service template itself, how to add a resource info section and collect as many required information as possible. Now, once I get this request submitted, my technician is going to go ahead and work on this particular request. So let me look for the ticket that is being created. So here I do see new hire. It's for the onboarding process. I click on it and I see all the relevant information that was chosen earlier has been displayed here. The next, as soon as I get this request created, which is also coming along with the cost, it is very obvious for me that it needs to go through the approval process. So I would like to have approvals triggered to the concerned people, the managers to get this request finally worked upon. For that, in the same template workflow tab, I do have an additional section in service catalog for approval details where I can add up to five stages and in each stage I can add as many approvals as required. You have two sections of approvers. One is for users. So you see the user names here. If you wonder how these users appear directly here in the list, then yes, you can go to admin users, any user profile. And as soon as you edit the user profile, you will have an option to enable service request approval and then this user will be automatically added to this list, provided the user has a valid email address for the approval mail to get sent to. Apart from that, you can also set users to certain roles in the organization. So say, for example, this particular ticket has been created by the user guest. Guest belongs to finance department. So I would like to have this request sent as an approval mail to the department approver of the finance department. So how would I initiate that? I can do that with the help of organizational roles. So go to the areas and directory or the admin tab and under organizational roles for different level of roles, I can create and associate users. So under departmental roles, I've created a role called as department approver. And for each department, I have associated users. So for administration, I have administrator, for sales, I have someone as Sean Adam. And finally, here for the finance department, I have Howard Stern, who is going to act as the department approver. The same person is to whom the approval mail has been triggered to, and I can see that he has already done or performed his action. So this way, rather than the technician going to find out who to which department the guest user belongs to, who is the department head or the, who is the department approver, 
the system is going to perform this job automatically for me. Approvals come with a set of configurations as well. So you could decide whether all the approvers must approve the service request in each stage for it to go to the next stage or if the first approval action is sufficient. Next, I can say whether the approval notification needs to be triggered as soon as the request has been created and if the technician needs to be assigned only after the service request is approved. Further, we saw how a user was allowed to choose between multiple SLAs. So all these SLAs can be associated to the template and you also have an add new SLA option here. Once I click on it, it automatically routes me to the admin tab service level agreement where I can add a new SLA. So to recap what we have discussed so far, we saw how efficiently and seamlessly can we build an onboarding template to deliver a shopping cart experience. This template showcased the cost details of each and every service, summing up the total cost. Then finally, the resource info questions, which is presented to you in a neat presentable format, the approval mechanisms involved, and finally, the SLAs that can be set. With this, Zilka should be able to find it much easier to get the onboarding request managed. Moving on is our change request. As discussed in the beginning, it is very important to determine the criticality of the device. And only if you determine the criticality of any device, you will be able to know what type of a change you need to perform, how to calculate its downtime, and what are the risk factors involved in each and every change request. So I've got a couple of changes created here. And if I click on to create a new change request, it automatically loads in front of me the default general template where I have all the options that answers the four W questions. What is the change that I'm going to carry out? Why is this change required? What is the reason behind it? Is it for any patch update or productivity improvement? Or it's, is it based on complying with any security related measures? When exactly is this change going to be performed? And who are the people, who are the resources or the stakeholders who are going to be directly or indirectly be a part of this change management? So I'm going to capture all these important four W questions. And this is important for any major change that I'm going to carry out in my organization. I can also create separate templates for standard changes. Say, for example, there is a weekly patching up activity that has been performed, or if there is a monthly reboot activity that is performed for all the servers, rather than me having to set it each and every time, I can go ahead and create a change template for standard changes and make it available with the predefined set of fields. Now, there is another template or another type of change which is very, very important for technicians, and that is an emergency template. So. An emergency template is used whenever there is a requirement that needs to be a change that needs to be immediately processed. So understanding the need of the hour, I will not be disturbing my technicians with a lot of fields in the template. Rather than that, I will keep it to the minimal, ask only for the required information. So say, for example, this change has already been carried out and now I'm just raising it for auditing purpose. So I can answer this question, is this a retrospective change or not? Meaning, if this change has already been done or not. So if I say yes, I am presented with additional set of five questions, like the number of teams involved, say uh, two teams were involved. Has the change been done before? Yes, it was done before. It was successful, but encountered issues. Has the change been tested before? Uh, only group testing was completed. Expected service outage, uh, I would say less than 10 hours. Change, change reversal time. Um, I can say, yeah, uh, no outage and less than one hour to back out. So I can create a custom trigger, a script in my change activity. So here is the custom trigger for change. So I, I will have the option to write scripts under custom triggers 
and calculate the risk score based on the answers that or the options that I provide to all these fields. So I can assign numeric values to these fields and the summing up of all the numeric values can calculate the total risk score that is going to get involved in the template. So now let's quickly get into the template configuration of change and see what more that we can do. So the change template is going to be again very similar to what you saw in incident template and service template. The fields can be dragged and dropped from here. It's not just this field, but also additional fields can be created. So when it comes to change, you can create an additional field of totally 12 additional fields for text type, four numeric fields, and four date fields. So these are the total number of fields create that you can create for change management. Now, once I have this template readily customized, this template can be associated to a workflow. We are going to discuss workflow in another one minute. But before that, I'm going to show the rest of the tabs linked to this template. The field and form rules, again, they do all the condition-based actions, making your template interactive. You just saw that the additional five questions popped up as soon as I chose a retrospective change that was with the help of field and form rules. Now, say this is going to be a standard change and the weekly patch up activity is done by Bob and he's the only person who's going to be the implementer. So rather than me having to choose Bob's name each and every time as the implementer, I can simply have it pre-configured in the template over here. So this way, I can see who's going to work on the change request beforehand. Now, we talked about change template, and we also saw that a template can be uh, linked to a workflow. So we need to know what exactly a workflow is. And for that, let me go into change workflows. A change normally comes with a standard six-stage design. So we start off with the submission stage where all the details are collected. And in the planning stage, we plan how the change activity needs to be performed. After we get the necessary recommendation from the change advisory board, we go ahead and implement the change, which is then finally reviewed and closed. But it is not always needed that you have to go through the same six stages again, or you have to go in the same one line pattern. You might need to skip certain stages. Example, your standard change again. A weekly patching up activity is something which you're doing for ages. Why do you need to plan it each and every time? Why you need to record it? Or why you need to go through the approval process? I can simply have these two stages skipped and I can go to the implementation stage. So all these activities can be performed. This kind of transitions can be performed using your change workflow. So your change workflow consists of nodes. So each and every node that is can be used in the workflow is available to your right over here. So I have all added all the six stages. And I say that when I move from submission to planning stage, if my risk is high, I would like it to go through an approval process. If my risk is medium, I will simply send a notification mail and then proceed to the planning stage. But if my risk is low, I can straight away go to the planning stage. Similarly, if before I go to the approval stage from the planning stage, I would like to have a condition validated. So I would like to check if the backout, the checklist, and the rollout details are not empty before I go to the approval stage. Once I reach the approval stage, I would like to make sure that based on the category that I have set for the template, the approval stages vary. So if it is compliance and security related change, I would like to have three stages of approvals triggered. Whereas if it is just data management, just two approvals, and finally for application related changes, just one level of approval to be triggered. Finally, before I'm going to go ahead and close this change, I would like to have the field closure code update updated to something called as closed completed. So you, all the stages and transition from one stage to the other, the condition based action, the multiple condition based action like in switch, so which we already saw here, like you can use multiple conditions and based on that you could make actions. If you would like to send notifications before and after a transition from one stage to the other, if you would like to send out multiple levels or multiple approvals in each level, 
and finally do field updates all that is possible throughout your stage and status transition so this feature is very similar to the request lifecycle feature which you saw on the incident and service templates so the workflow and the request lifecycle feature will be associated to the template and that is how these features are coming live whenever you make use of the template so the request lifecycle here is associated to the templates it asset issue and request a laptop whereas this change workflow which is uh, uh, goes by the name major change is associated to a major change template so quickly taking a recap of what we have discussed we saw how we can build templates for different scenarios like an emergency change or a major change or a standard change how to loop in the right stakeholders using change workflows uh, like how to bring in the cab the change advisory board members and how to have different people play different roles in change and finally how to make end users to be a part of this change so to show you that when i'm going to have change uh, roles associated to each and every members i would like to have the view and access permission defined over here so in each and every change role so say for example a change approver can be a user or he can be a technician or he can be someone belonging to a specific support group so this is the good news that you can carry here even a normal user can be a part of a change activity and he will be delegated with certain set of view and access permission based on the role that he is going to play in this particular change so with the help of all these options in place now you can very well understand how zilka will be able to estimate the risk factor how to estimate the criticality of a particular device and the impact that it can cause likely cause how to plan the downtime so zilka should be able to do much more strategic change related processes in the organization now that we have discussed about incident service and change next we are going to discuss about release and project management so we discussed about change and how we will be able to perform certain changes in the environment a release i would say is more likely where you can fit in an entire software deployment life cycle so if you would like to track a, a, a process or a release a very extensively if you would like to track each and every stage of it then you could opt for release management say for example i have an internal tool a crm application and it has been managed and developed by my internal zilka developers so the developers of zilka immediately gets all the information in the submission and in the planning stage they plan how this particular feature needs to be built and released next they go to the development stage where they develop the entire activity the feature and they send it out for testing purpose they make this feature available for a small set of users in a user acceptance testing environment the feature is getting intensively tested in this particular stage and once they get a thumbs up they can go to the deployment stage where it can be made available to the general audience or it can be it can go live so for any change any new thing that has been introduced in the environment it is very very important that you train the users ahead only then the users will start making use of the changes that has happened the, the new release that has been come up and that is going to contribute to the success of the release so you need to provide an intensive training to the end users who are going to work on this so in order to facilitate with all our flows the the, uh, the stage transition and for a template just like change we have templates for release so release comes with its own roles the release related additional fields we have got release templates we also support custom triggers where you can execute um, scripts or we can perform interactive or out of the box operations even for release management release also comes with a release workflow where you can uh, tell how a transition needs to happen from one stage to the other and what are the set of operations to be followed in each and every stage in status transition moving on to projects if you would like to have a change that is going to happen for a very longer period of time that is going to involve a lot of resources that is where you bring in your projects so as soon as i develop a project 
I divide this entire project into milestones so that I will be able to track the progress of this project in terms of its budget and in terms of the time that is taken to complete each and every milestone. And under each milestone, I will be able to create tasks. So when I look into the overview of this project, I can see how this project is divided into different milestones and then into further set of tasks. All these tasks can be assigned to the members of the project who are going to hold specific roles in this project. So anyone could be a project admin who has complete control over this project, a team leader who has a complete control over the entire milestone, and team members who are going to have or who are going to have ownership about the different individual tasks that have been assigned to them. So together, every can, everyone can work on each and every task and they can finally uh, complete each and every milestone, further moving towards the closure of the project. So I can extensively track the load that has been faced by each and every technician and the tasks that has been assigned to them through a grant view that is provided here. For example, Keita Graham and Pavitra are two people with the same skill set and they are, uh, Heetha has been assigned with application check and gathering current exchange statistics. So two tasks that is to be performed by Heetha, whereas Pavitra on the same month is not assigned with any task. So I can quickly determine that there is a load imbalanced here. I can have the load properly balanced. So a very good news about project management once again is that it's not just technicians who can be a part of project management. It can also be your end users, even your external contractors and vendors who can simply hold a requested account in Service Desk Plus and be added to project. You also have a common whiteboard, a white dashboard where the entire conversation belonging to a single project can be discussed widely among all the project members. Moving on, we will check, we will recap about what we have discussed so far. So we saw how the re release management takes place and the release workflow that can be associated along with the templates that has been assigned to release management. So when it comes to your projects, how to capture details unique to a project, how to have this project divided into a milestone, and finally, how to bring in the rope in the right project members. So once I have got this project created over here, and if I see that this project is going to be repeatedly used, so say, for example, this is Exchange to Office 365 migration, I might have another set of project going to happen in the next year, which is again related to mailbox migration. So rather than me having to fill in all these details, these screenshots all over again, I can raise a template or create a template right from here. Just click on Create Template give the name something as mailbox migration and click save. And you can see that the project template gets automatically added under project templates here. So going to project templates, the mailbox migration is created as a new template just with the click of a button. And you can see all the details, including the milestones, the tasks and the members that I have already added into this project module. So you can see how easier it is to raise a new template from an existing project, not for the Zilker technicians having to recreate them all over again in case if it is being frequently used. So until now, we have been using uh, module related projects. Yeah. And this is not just it. Imagine the day to day activities of a technician. They do send constant follow up mails. They do send, uh, they do, uh, you know, send the constant uh, frequent resolution to multiple different tickets that have been raised. So there are certain tasks that are becoming repetitive in a technician's life. So how to make that repetitive life going to be easier for the technician is what we are going to discuss next. Initially, we discussed about tasks, about how tasks can be associated to a template, right? When there are more tasks that are going to be done on a repeated basis, like creating an account in Active Directory or setting up an email address to a technician, loading up a paper in a printer tray. So all these can be created as task templates. So all I have to do is to give it a suitable name and title along with a description. And then I can add the other details like assigning it to the appropriate group and technician who will be performing these tasks. So when uh, when you happen to see users 
who come after a holiday, you know, they intend to forget their passwords. This is going to be very frequent. Now, what they do is that when they forget their password, they try to reset the password. And here pops up a security question. What is your favorite color? The last month, their favorite color would have been black. But this one, since they watched the Avatar movie where the Navis are very famous, this they now have their favorite color as blue. And now that the requesters are forgetting their favorite color, they again go through the same process of raising a new incident request. So now the technician has to go through the standard process of resetting the password for the user and having to complete it. So rather than me doing it over and over again as a technician, I'm going to make use of resolution templates. So I can configure my resolution templates under my admin tab. So under admin, go to resolution template and have them created and use this resolution template over here. So it's a password reset. I choose this and the template automatically appears in front of me. Similarly, most of the applications which do not work or which has a new feature released but not shown in the user mission is only because of a cache issue. If you just check with an alternative browser or if you clear the browser cache, it is just going to work. So I can create a snippet for cache issue and the information just pops up. This way, the resolution which needs to be mandatorily filled for each and every request is drastically being cut out with the help of snippets and templates that I have. Also, if I would like to reply to a user stating that their device is ready for the issue with their IT asset, rather than me having to type it out over and over again, I have my reply templates readily available under my admin module once again. I can simply make use of them, configure as much as I require, and I can make it available. So the interesting part here is that I can make private templates which can be visible only to me or I can make an administrator do this job and make it available to the rest of the technicians for them to make use of it. So this way, not just module related templates are available, but even tiniest activities performed by the technicians which are going to be standard or repetitive can also be managed in the form of templates. So a quick recap is that we were able to uh, use incident templates, service catalogs, templates for change, release, and project, and finally, our task resolution and replies. Thank you all for your valuable time on the session today. I hope the session was very helpful. And for those who have not implemented yet, this session is really going to help you out in starting to configure your templates for your technicians. And for those who have already implemented, I hope that you have seen something more than what you have usually been doing all these days. So thank you all once again, and we will meet you for the next masterclass series.